All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and today we're taking a look at another games recording software called D3D Gear, which is a new recording software that can both record and stream games from your computer, and it's one of those nice recorders that lets you use your onboard, like on graphics card, media encoder, so that you can seamlessly and for very low performance draw from your computer, do all your recording and streaming so that, you know, you don't have everything lag out and you can't really function in your games while you're trying to do that. So this is a $35 piece of software that I've been trying out and it offers you a couple of things. The first page that you've got is it lets you run D3D gear when Windows starts. And if you find yourself doing a lot of streaming and recording, and you always want this at your fingertips, and that's a pretty good option to enable. Personally, I tend to use um, recorders only when I intend to, and that's, you know, in like one shot briefly at like uh, once or twice a week, and I get all my recordings out of the way, and then I don't have to worry about them after that. And then the other function you have here on the general tab for D3D gear is to enable a push to talk button, which is handy if you're using a microphone, and you find you have a fair bit of background noise, just to prevent that from being like a constant annoyance during your video, you can just set it so that it only listens to your microphone when you press your push to talk button. And for a lot of online gamers, you might be already familiar with using that if you use things like Discord, Ventrilo, Mumble, TeamSpeak, any of the most common voice record, or not voice recording, but um, voice chat programs have that functionality. So the first tab that you have here if you're setting up D3D gear is the FPS overlay. This is really nice for you to use if you don't necessarily know what your frame rate is at in the game that you're trying to record, and you really want to record 60 frames per second video, but you're not sure if your computer is getting that 60 frames per second. And the rule is, if your computer isn't playing something at 60, then it's not going to be able to properly record at 60 and your video is going to look slightly janky and choppy in a really subtle way that can bug some viewers and it's better to keep it at 30 FPS. So this lets you put your FPS counter in one of nine predetermined locations or you can click on this other button and you can put this just about anywhere. Uh, I tend to like it in the corners just because that's usually an empty spot in one of those places where you're not covering up part of your in-game interface, but you can even put it like above your, uh, your webcam, like let's say you put your webcam in the bottom corner because you green screen, and then you can put your webcam like overlay thing over top of here. That's only important if you're recording the overlay, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. And then you can set a toggle hotkey and also set the color if you want like a custom lime green color to use for your overlay. And the size and how much or how often it updates. I don't really know that there's a reason why you'd want it to update slower, but you can do that right here. Next up, we've got your screenshot settings. So this determines where your screenshots are saved. The default is just under pictures. You can put it in a special D3D gear folder if you have other screenshots from other programs that you have in your pictures folder. It lets you change the hotkey for taking screenshots. And by default, it sets your screenshot format to BMP, which is a bitmap file. And I don't really like those files. They don't work really well with some like cheap and easy to use um, image editors. It's better if you put your screenshots as either JPEG or PNG. JPEG, of course, will be the smallest and most compressed in case that space is sort of an issue for you. And then you can include the frame rate in the screenshot or add a timestamp to the file name. And then you can display a screenshot capture notification to make sure that you know that it went through successfully because sometimes when you play, uh, sometimes weird bugs happen, even on the Steam screenshots. So it's nice to know when it actually did take the screenshot in case you you know, really want to be sure you got that really cool scene in that really brand new game that just came out, you don't miss that opportunity. And the last thing is to continue to use screenshots until the hotkey is released. 
Um, that's nice if you want to make GIFs. Just, just as like a little side note. I don't really do that, so I'm going to leave that turned off. After that, we've got the primary bread and butter of a lot of these programs, because a lot of people don't necessarily have the ability to stream or stream well or the patience to do so. And here we have the Record Movies tab. So, the first thing you definitely probably want is to just enable the movie recording with a toggle at the top. And then I changed my default recording location to D3D Tests. Uh, I partially capitalized the E for some reason. And then you have a couple of different capture modes for this program, both for recording and streaming purposes, which is you can record your desktop if you want to use this program to say, oh, I don't know, record a tutorial like your buddy Larry is doing, but the primarily you want it to just detect whatever game that you currently have selected or you're, you know, playing around in at the time so that you don't have to worry about it, you know, recording a black screen or recording something else entirely. And this will just detect whatever DirectX or OpenGL uh, sort of game you're currently playing or you're currently have control over in case you're playing more than one at a time, which I don't know why you do that, but some people do. And then you can also change the hotkey. Something I was kind of impressed by is not a lot of recorders by default go up to upwards of 4K video size um, resolutions. Personally, I just leave mine at the standard 1920 by 1080 and then 60 FPS because this is a beefy computer. And again, if you're not playing your game at, at 60 FPS, leave it at 30 because it'll look better when you upload it to places like YouTube. Just trust me on this, it's a subtle thing and people somehow notice and complain and I don't know why. And then after that, you've got the video format. Now this is the one downside to D3D gear is that the only formats that they offer you are AVI formats and WMV, which is Windows Media Video. And these are both Microsoft um, formats that Microsoft produce. They're not bad video formats, but not every video editor works for them, especially if you edit your videos on another machine or send them to your friend to edit because you don't know how to do that. Um, these two formats, they're funky. Um, AVI 2 is probably the one that you want to use. It's the most new and fanciest and up to date. And AVI is nice because it prevents video corruption because you can start and stop a video encoding at just about any time. Um, the problem with these is that MP4 is more universally supported and it's more supported by YouTube, which is the primary platform where you'll be putting a lot of these videos. After that, we've got the video codec. Now, if you have the option, I suggest using one of the AMD, Intel, or NVIDIA recording codecs. It depends what graphics cards you have, or in the case of Intel, what onboard graphics you have. And this is what allows your computer to use the built-in, like, onboard, on-graphics card uh, video encoder to just make a copy of the video that's already being produced when you play a game, it's what's being sent to your monitor, and it takes almost no computer resources to do that. Um, they have it for AMD, they have it for Intel, but if you don't see any of these, I recommend using one of these ones up here. Probably the Fast MPEG version 2 codec, or the Windows Media Video 9 codec. Those seem to be the most stable when I was performing tests earlier. But for my money, I like to use NVIDIA. It's just the one that's the most stable. And then for quality, you can set it up to best, which is plenty of quality for, for YouTube. But I found that even down at good, it's still more than enough data being um, put out by the recorder for you to, to edit and use for places like YouTube, or maybe you do stuff on Vimeo, I don't know why. And the thresh or the threads, I would just leave to automatic. This just determines how many of your CPU cores or CPU threads are being used in order to record your game. But just because different games use different numbers of threads for different purposes, I like to leave that on auto. It prevents weird things from happening. And this D3D gear is smart enough to know exactly how many are the most optimum for what you're trying to do. So let's see here. Down here, audio recording settings. 
Personally, I like to keep my stuff as a raw PCM file because I edit my audio afterwards because I like to separate out audio into multiple tracks so I can edit my microphone separately. But if you don't really give a shit about that, then just set it to MP3, which will save you a bit of space in the recording. And you really won't lose much in the way of quality because this is going to get compressed when it goes up to YouTube anyway. Then you can set up your recording devices, which I recommend you do. Both of these devices are set to default playback device when you first open the program, but it prevents errors and other issues if you go through this slider and you select the device that you use to play back your sound. So the main sound is going to be like your desktop sound, your speakers, or your headset earphones, and then the microphone is obviously your microphone, and you can manually adjust the volumes in here, but I suggest just doing that on the, the desktop side because it'll be a little bit more consistent and less weird between games. And then one of the reasons why I messed around with this program in the first place was you can save microphone recordings in a separate audio track. Now this is great because it lets you edit your audio separately. It's terrible because it doesn't record a separate audio file that you can then put into a video editor. It records it as a second audio track inside of the original video file, which isn't always supported or it doesn't always import correctly into every video editor. Uh, when I was testing it, it sometimes worked in Premiere Pro and sometimes it didn't. I'm not really sure why, but if you want to record your audio separately, test this before you make your recording just to make sure it works in your video editor. If not, you may have to record it separately. Um, your mic audio that is inside of something like Adobe Audition. And then you can convert surround sound to stereo sound. Again, you don't really need to do that because that's supported by YouTube. And then you can record your mouse cursor or hide it in the case of, say, a first person shooter. And you can add a frame rate number to your video file so that you know what it was doing when you were recording it in case you need to make adjustments in the future. And that's basically how you set up for the recording. Broadcasting here is very similar. You select the game mode, either desktop or game. Desktop, you'd use this for if you were like an artist and you were going to do art streams, which is becoming quite popular on, you, on YouTube and Twitch and other places. But if you're doing video games, leave it at game. You can set your broadcast hotkey. Mine was empty by default, not sure why. And then you can pick your streaming platform of choice. Currently, it only um, supports Twitch and Hitbox by default, but you can use the custom field here to enter the server URL, which is provided in the dashboard of whatever streaming service you use, along with your stream key. Otherwise, in the case of Twitch or Hitbox, you just select the server closest to you, input your stream key, and you're good to go. Down here, very similarly, this just supports all the most common resolutions up to 1920 by 1080 a frame rate of up to 60, and a max resolution of 3500, which is the max bitrate, or not resolution, but bitrate, I think I said resolution. It, su it supports a max bitrate of up to 3500 kilobits per second, and that's the one that's recommended by Twitch primarily. Um, places like YouTube can handle up to 6500 and above because they have better infrastructure, but that's really the limit to where Twitch will start getting mad at you so I'd suggest if your, your internet can handle it, pop it up to 3,500. If not, you might need to dial it back to like 2,000. I wouldn't dial it back any more than that because that's an, actually a pretty low bit rate for video quality, all things being equal. Then again, for frame rate, if you're not getting, you know, above 30, if you're getting like around 40, just do it at 30 FPS. It just looks better in the long run. It's more stable, all that fun thing. Um, same rules for encoding codec, you just have less options here. If you can use a hardware-specific one, I recommend it. Otherwise, I recommend using the D3D gear one, because when I tested it remotely, because I can't really showcase it here at my home, it seemed to provide the best um, performance and the best video quality. And then down here, you've just got your primary sound devices. Again, I recommend you set those up. And you can also set it up so that it saves your broadcasts locally so that you can edit them and upload them to YouTube later, which is really nice. I really like that. 
The one weird thing is these things use an H.264 encoder. I'm not really sure because I didn't test this out specifically what type of video file they output, but I, I don't know. It's just weird that they use H.264 encoding and then they use AVI and WMV um, file types, which aren't always supported. It's just funky. It's just a shame. And then you can set it up to broadcast to all configured servers simultaneously if you're so cool that you stream to Hitbox, Twitch, and YouTube at the same time. There are crazy people out there that do that with specialized rigs. Um, I, I mean, I'd do it if I could, honestly. And then you've got the bread and butter of the streaming community is the ability to add custom overlays to brand your stream. And you can do that right here. You can put in an, either your stream pro or Twitch alerts as like an animated thing on the screen. You can put in a media file or a web camera. This is where you add your webcam to. And then after you select whatever file you want to use or whatever image, then you would align it to like a corner on your screen. And then you'd have to use the X and Y axes type stuff here along with the size in order to properly fit it in your screen. And then you can include or disclude it while you're broadcasting, depending on what you want, or include or disclude it in the local recordings. And this is actually nice, so if you were doing a highlight reel for YouTube, YouTube it usually looks really bad if you have a, 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 an overlay, if you can get rid of it. So you can make it so that it only appears in your broadcast, and then for your highlights it's just you, yourself, and no other extra graphics besides you and the game, which is actually pretty cool. Although I don't see an option to do any chroma keying inside of here if you do have a webcam enabled. And currently I don't have a webcam plugged in here to show it to you. I just have my default one which I disabled in the hardware settings. And then last but not least you can do some benchmark stuff. This is all pretty self-explanatory. If you want to mess around with that, feel free. And that's basically how you set up and use D3D gear in my recommended settings. Now I'll show you a video that I recorded with it, just to showcase you what it ends up looking like. So let's see here, where's my videos, and D3D tests, and here's a Dark Souls video that I recorded. A little bit earlier to sort of troubleshoot it before I did made this recording. And this is a large AVI file. Now, it looks stuttery inside of the video sometimes, and that's just because AVI files are semi-uncompressed. Which means that it's just a really big file and it takes the computer a second to read all the data, so you might see like a weird, like, jitter in the frames. But overall, I thought this was pretty good. The only thing I get with this compared to other recorders is sometimes I just get like one random frame blip somewhere in the video, just one. It's never more than one, even if I record up to 30 minutes, and that's it. But it's really smooth, I get a, a constant solid 30 FPS, and then up here at the top of the screen was just a watermark because I'm using the trial version to do this tutorial. But yeah, I think this is a pretty good software. It performs real well, it rates real well from people that I've looked up and looked at reviews for it. And it's 35 bucks, it's got a pretty meaningful trial period if you like to try out your software before you buy. And I, I definitely, I'd recommend this. It does a pretty decent job. I don't like the way that it handles audio separation, but c'est la vie, c'est la vu. You, you take what you can get sometimes if this is the program that works for you. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Links to this program are in the description. Let me know if you have any technical questions or anything I can help you out with. And I will catch you guys and gals next time. Toodles, everybody.